Five tips for optimizing your Google Ads Performance Max campaign. As you know, they're pretty automated, but there are definitely things that you can do to optimize. So I'm gonna cover five different things you can do and make sure you stay through to the end of the video because I also throw in a bonus tip as well. So you definitely wanna check that out. Oh, and if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up icon so that you can let the algorithms know that this is good content and I can keep creating some awesome content for you. So let's go dive into my account and let's get stuck right in. So here we are in our live Google ad account and here are two campaigns that this particular account has got running, one performance max and one branded search. And as you can see, this particular campaign has got the lion's share of the uh, impressions, spend, etc. So that's obviously what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, to be clear, this particular business is an e-commerce business that sells beard kits, beard oil, aftershave, accessories. Okay, so that's uh, helpful to understand how we're going to optimize our performance max to see if Google's kind of getting on the right track. And high level, we can see that it's getting a 0.5% click through rate, which is obviously not great, but obviously our ads are being put everywhere. So it's expected it's going to have a low click through rate. But really what I like to focus on is the conversion rate uh, and obviously the conversion value divided by cost, which is their ROAS. So really we've kind of got to improve this situation. Otherwise uh, the ROAS is just not there. Okay, so if we go into our Performance Max campaign, we can actually have a look at the Insights tab. This is going to give us a little bit of data as to what's working, not a whole lot, but really we will take what we can get. So if I compare the last 28 days, uh, what I want to see here is, uh, am I kind of showing up for the right type of search terms, which it looks like I am, which is, which is good. And not that I could really do anything about that anyway, but I am kind of showing up for beard grooming kits, etc. If I click on view details, it's going to give me the search terms for this. Uh, not that I could even load in negative keywords anyway, but I just kind of want to get a sense of is Google on the right track. Unfortunately, it doesn't give me click through rate or conversion rate or anything like that. So it's a bit limiting, well, a lot limiting rather. <laughs> Uh, but at least I want to see uh, our Google on the right track. Okay, and it looks like uh, they are. So the first real tip I have when uh, trying to get the best performance from your Performance Max campaign is structuring your campaigns the right way. So within your Performance Max campaign, you have asset groups. And obviously tied to the asset groups are the products that you're selling um, and the ads that are running for those particular products but also your audience signal. So the mistake that I see here that's been made is that they've only got one asset group and I'm sure they've got all their products loaded in uh, and a whole bunch of different audiences within that one asset group. Now, the problem with doing this is that we won't be able to identify which audience is driving the performance. So my suggestion is to structure your asset groups to be themed by a certain audience or, and also as well as your product. So what I mean here, if I go into the audience signal and I go to edit, you'll see that they've grouped their, a bunch of different audiences together. Okay, so they've got uh, your data, your website traffic mixed in with in-market audiences. Okay, and whilst, and I'm not suggesting that they don't test all both of these types of audiences, you should separate them by asset group so that you can compare the sales that each audience is generating, okay? So segmenting and structuring your campaign is really the key to, uh, I guess, trying to optimize it. Because you know if you find that certain in-market audiences aren't driving any sales, then you can easily just turn off that asset group. Uh, but by grouping them together, you don't have that level of information. Okay, which kind of leads me also into my second tip that I have is to test a custom segment audience. I can see they don't have any custom segments. Uh, these are actually one of my favorite audience types to test. So definitely uh, experiment with custom segment audiences. So you can just create a new one from your asset group. Obviously, once again, you would have a dedicated asset group for a custom segment. You give it a name and you have either of these options and you can and should test both of these. So really this is 
kind of you saying to Google, I want to target people who've searched for any of these terms in Google. And here you type in your best keywords, your best converting keywords and uh, what you think is the most intent based queries. So for this particular business, I would type in beard kits, uh, beard oil, um, or maybe a beard growth kit and it's obviously Google is giving me suggestions uh, as well. All right. So put in as many keywords as you possibly can here. And you should also put in people who browse types of websites. So here you can put in your website, but more importantly, you would put in your competitor websites as well. And you would also test a separate one of uh, people who've got these purchase intentions. Okay, so that is the second tip that I have uh, with optimizing your Performance Max campaign. All right, so if I close out of this, the third tip I have is to write really good ads and leverage the most amount of real estate that you possibly have. So if I go into here and I go into Edit Assets, Confusingly, Google have called their ads assets just to make things confusing for people. And if I scroll down here, I can see they've got up to 20 images, which is really good. They've got a logo, which is great, but they don't have a video. So one of the uh, components of a Performance Max campaign is uh, YouTube as a placement. Unfortunately, you can't opt out of showing your ad on YouTube. So if you don't create a video and you are actually able to publish an ad without a video like these particular people have, what Google's gonna do is they're gonna automatically create a video for you using your images and your text. It's, I have seen these automatically generated videos and let me tell you, they are terrible. So you definitely want to add in a video uh, to be used because whether you like it or not, a video ad will be running in your Performance Max campaign. Also, this particular person has not leveraged the headlines that they've got available to them. They've only put in their brand name as a headline and I would add in at least three. Obviously, you can add up to five and leverage the most amount of real estate you can have. Um, I would also add in up to five different long headlines once again so Google can mix and match and test them. The description here is over the character limit, which means it's going to be cut off at the 60 character mark, which you don't want because it probably won't make any sense to people. So definitely be mindful of writing good descriptions within the character limit. And I would also add in at least two, considering uh, that's what's probably going to be shown in some places, depending on the placement, obviously. Okay, so that is the third tip is to leverage the most amount of real estate and include a video. My fourth tip actually is an extension of this as well, which is to incorporate ad extensions to your ad. And as we can see here, they have not added any site links. They've got the automated call to action. They haven't added in any call outs or structured snippets. So their ads are really looking quite bare. Okay, so you wanna leverage as much real estate in your ad as possible. You do not pay any extra for having ad extensions and you will just dominate uh, your, your the, the ad real estate. Okay, so that is the other tip that I have. I'm just gonna leave this. And the fifth tip that I have is with location targeting. So I go to location targeting and I go to match locations. And as you can see here, this Performance Max campaign has been set to target probably all locations. Now, even though the lion's share of their impressions are coming from Australia, there are impressions and some levels of spend, even though it's not much, but I'm sure if I did a longer time frame, it would be more in other countries. So you want to, if you do want to advertise in more than one country, if that's relevant for your business, then I would create country specific performance max campaigns because you want to kind of um, optimize for certain countries. But for this particular business where I know they only sell in Australia, you want to turn off uh, these other countries because you're just wasting uh, spend and you're sending Google the wrong kind of data. Now, as mentioned, there was a bonus tip as well. If I go into the settings here, uh, there is a setting here that says 
for customer acquisition to bid equally for new and existing customers. All right. So you can uh, optimize your campaign for acquiring new customers, which I would say for most people, that's what they would want to do. You don't want to bid the same for your existing customers for new customers because hopefully your existing customers uh, have some level of brand loyalty they've bought from you before <clears throat> they know and trust your business so therefore you don't need to pay top dollar for them so that's my bonus tip here is to optimize for acquiring new customers Okay, so there you have it. There are my top tips for optimizing Performance Max campaign. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.